bot materials source can be done with a wide variety of um, eddy current probes and, and, and at a wide variety of frequencies, but generally speaking, say for doing non ferrous material, 60 kilohertz, which is the standard frequency used in conductivity meters, is normally pretty a pretty good place to start. Um, so I need to go and set this instrument to 60 kilohertz. I can't get to two, so that's kind of a long way away. Think about that's not too difficult. Here are 35, 60 kilohertz. And uh, if I balance in air, and let's just go and check where the where we are and everything. So the gain set equal, it's a 45 degrees, that's probably going to be a bit big for our kind of requirements, as we'll see here. These are our different materials. Um, and then the nicest thing to do probably is also to go and set to full store. So let's go across here, go down to persistence, increase that to off. Uh, and then it would be seems to go here and this down here. Reduce the gain dramatically. Okay. So copper and I probably need to move the phase around so let's go. screen. So this is a liftoff line caused by copper. Uh, if we go down to something like stainless steel, we get a shorter line. Uh, and then if we go through the aluminiums in sequence, uh, just thinking which way to go, then there's an aluminium, another aluminium, and third aluminium. And that's pretty much um, even a fourth, so they are getting kind of close together. So you can use this simple technique to demonstrate sorting. And if I go and find something that may be ferrous, that's just that's, a, that's an in canal. Um, okay, this is ferrous, and this is going off in the opposite direction. So these are kind of our lift off lines. Um, and that's obviously another load, that's a 303 stainless. So we have a variety of things basically in different clock positions. Now, um, you can make this, the discrimination much better. So say we just concentrate on, let me raise the screen, illustrate what we're doing. These are the three aluminiums. They're all quite close together. What we can actually do is we choose to balance on one aluminium. Uh, and go down and now increase the gain. Okay, so these are two. I can see them about this far apart. I could obviously have increased the gain. Maybe what I do is I just increase the gain in the x axis so I. Go down to here, uh, unlock the gain, set that to off. So if I increase the gain the y-axis, let's go, let's go, maybe even make it 10 dB. Balance on 
this sample here, erase the screen, or press on the freeze. That's our value, which is 31.86ix. Uh, this is our value, which is 46.78. And this is our value, which is 28.48. And you can see we can keep increasing the gain. Uh, maybe, let's go. And move that spot up to there. Now it's going there. Let's go in there, clean the screen up to get rid of the mess. So this is uh, 31.86, the 46.78 is going off the bottom of the screen, the 28.48 is going to the top of the screen. So now we've got 3% YX variation, approximately. Um, show you different values, and if we just go and choose a random piece of aluminium here, see that it's coming in low. Then well, this is the same, probably is, and it's very similar to a third one. So you can use this as a use box gates, etc., to do sorting, but it's the amplifying the gain to pull the parts out and of course this fits in with all the fundamental theory of eddy counts. Here I've set the probe frequency to 10 kilohertz because that low from experience is quite good for doing various material sorting. Um, it might be a good idea to uh, move the spot to the middle of the screen, so let's go and do that. Okay, so there's zero, zero. Uh, so now, um, if I balance in air, like we saw with the aluminium, uh, we get various lift-off lines. This is this this is actually stainless steel. This is 420, 410 stainless steels, or various magnetic stainless steels. And they all look quite close together. So although we get discrimination there, and this is our good old EN1A test block, we can't actually see what the difference is. Uh, currently I've got the uh, the gain set 28, 28 dB, uh, but I've also had to reduce the uh, input amplifier gain uh, to stop the signal saturating because these are quite unbalanced signals on ferrous. Um, so the trick is to take one of the materials you want to sort and press the balance button, uh, clear the screen, and now we see the ends of the spot and we can see that they are pretty much so these these two instantly jump out at you because they're showing quite a different response so certainly can sort those two but this the 416 to 420 are looking quite close together but uh, if we turn up the game um, we can so we put 60b in so we make it 34 say Then that stays more where it was, but now this is now further apart. If I then erase the screen to make it a bit more clearer, and then we can separate. Uh, you could play around a bit more, uh, but this is, I would say, not a bad, a bad separation. And then we go back to our old, Johnny old Ian, Ian one A test block isn't even on the screen. So what we've done is basically amplified the, the tip of the stainless steel that will also be off the screen. So, and of course if you wanted to put the screen onto a half a second persistence to make it, not have to keep pressing the erase button. Stay on the same test pieces, in fact, what we'll do is we'll just go and take that and use the well test block, but I'm using this probe instead. Uh, well, I think doing coating thickness assessment, which I'm probably going to demonstrate now, uh, isn't that frequency dependent, to my experience. Um, so we'll probably stay with the same frequency we're using. Uh, is If I balance 
on the material spots here. It's very similar really in, in that to doing a sword, um, except now where are we? So let's get rid of it. It assumes it's off the screen, so we have to get in the game art is the main thing. So okay, spot has just reappeared. I can see probably doesn't show it on the video. So that's in contact, that's off. Uh, might be easier to understand if I okay, I'll put the persistence to half a second. So whoops, hang on. Press OK first of all. Oops. And back there. Clear the screen. So that's contact. That's half a millimetre. These are half a millimetre shims. Um, the other thing we can do to make it a bit more scientific is if we go to the spot mode we can go down to coordinates and uh, read out the R, the length of the vector. Um, and the other thing I was thinking of doing was basically like go back into spot and maybe make three pixels wide. No, that's half a millimetre. There'll be a diminishing for the turns. And one thing we could do to make it a bit easier to see also is to go along and now move the spot over to the left hand side of the screen. You can see the and there if I go. That's, so now we have uh, we're reading out two seventy one one seventy five and it's flat. And you could do a graph and turn that into a way of actually measuring coating thickness. 